Hi there, everybody. My name is Matt Hoker, and I'm better known as Blazer003 on many of the Blender forums. And this is actually my first video tutorial. I've done a few written tutorials, but this is my first video tutorial, which being a video producer is probably sad that this is, but um, that said, better late than never. Uh, quick background, I got into Blender back in 2001. I was trying to make my own Star Wars video. I was putting plastic models against a green screen and putting the camera on the skateboard and rolling, anyway. It looked terrible. Uh, one of my friends said, hey, have you tried 3D animation? Gave me Blender, that was 2.21, I believe was the version number. Uh, and so I got involved then and I've been learning and using Blender ever since. I'm a video producer for a church and uh, my job has blessed me with the opportunity to be able to practice video and 3D animation, all kinds of stuff for a living. So. One of the awesome things about Blender is how fast it advances because it's an entire community working on the program and we have an awesome team that compiles all that stuff and makes sure that it fits and Blender is just awesome. I wish I had the ability to program. I got into video a long time ago, stopped doing programming. Uh, sometimes I wish I was able to program my own features into Blender. But there's a cool team that does that and I came up with the idea for a render farm. And uh, this render farm is a super simple idea. Um, it really stemmed because I was making animations and in these animations I was just ma uh, randomly setting a start frame and an end frame and like doing one to a hundred on one computer. And then I'd go to another computer that was on the same network and point it to that uh, same network drive and I would have that computer render file 101 through 200 and then uh, you know, the, another computer do 201 through 300. Well, the problem is that some computers were way faster than others, and so one computer would be done and just be sitting there, and I'd want the animation to be done sooner, so then I would start that computer rendering some of the frames that the other computer was supposed to be rendering, but then it just turned into a big mess because each computer was rendering a section of frames, and it was hard to remember which computer was rendering what frames. So I thought to myself, okay, how could I just have uh, if I was going to make a make a add-on to this to Blender, how would I make it know that a file was being rendered? And the the obvious and very simple answer is that every time it starts rendering a frame, that it would create a dummy file, and uh, then when it creates that dummy file, then uh, another computer run, running Blender would look into that shared directory and see that there was a file in there called 0001 and know that that frame was being rendered, and so then it would go to 0002 and render that frame. And that way you'd have a very simple render farm where all these computers were working, working just to render uh, frames into this one directory. Now obviously this only works when you're doing individual frames, which I suggest doing anyway. So I set up this little file here. Uh, it's just a really simple animation. You can see I just was messing around. Uh, and I created this to show, off, show a few things here uh, that you want to do. Um, so I created this file, and one thing, anytime you're opening uh, the same file on multiple computers, uh, I always file external data and pack all data into blend file. Um, that way, things like this text, if I don't have that font in the exact same place on a different computer, then uh, Blender isn't going to know where to find that text, and it's just going to render using the the default font. So by packing the data, I've packed in the font. I've also packed in any textures that are being used um, in the file, and obviously that makes files bigger. And you have to consider, okay, if you have a giant movie file that is uh, you're using as a background for, say, uh, some 3D motion tracking, you probably don't want to pack that into the file, but you can use relative directories. Now, what are relative directories? Well, that's just simply just kind of an old DOS thing, where right here you can see that I have put forward slash forward slash render uh, backslash render farm test. What that's going to do is it's going to look and say, okay, this file, this blend file up here is in uh, Blender Projects uh, 2015-0305 render farm test backslash 01 render farm test dot blend. That's where that blend file is located. It's in this directory, 2015-0305 render farm test. Okay, so it's in that directory. Uh, by doing the forward slash forward slash, it is saying, I want you to go to the directory that you are located in, in this case, the blend file, and I want you to go and make uh, the renders, the frame renders in the folder render slash, and then render farm test dot, or render farm test 0001 dot JPEG. So uh, the nice thing about Blender is if that folder isn't there, it will actually create it, which I love because I can just type in forward slash forward slash render I, that's basically where I render all of my projects. Whatever project it is, I usually render it to a folder called render in that, uh, 
uh, within that directory where my blend file is. So that's a little convoluted, but I think you get the point. So we've got this set up. So it's going to render into this folder slash render slash render farm test dot JPEG. Um, now right here you have overwrite and placeholders and these are the two features that when I came up with this idea I submitted onto the blender.org feature request site. Uh, some people poo pooed it, said it wasn't going to work. Uh, I kept thinking and I said, you know what, I think this really will work. And uh, but then I forgot about it. I didn't check back on it for about a year and all of a sudden, lo and behold, I saw these buttons overwrite and placeholders in Blender 2.6 something or maybe it was 2.5 something. I think it was 2.6 something. And I realized that those were the, feature, the, the features that I had requested. So that was really cool. So um, when, we're, when we're doing a, uh, a render to a network, common network drive, you want to uncheck overwrite and check placeholders. Now that's what that does, what I said, where it creates a blank placeholder file and it won't overwrite it if that file is already seen there. So that's really cool because uh, I'm going to simulate on just this one computer by opening up another version of Blender. So I'm going to save this file. I packed the data into it. Uh, I'm going to save it. Now that I've changed this to, to uncheck overwrite and check placeholders, I'm also going to come over here. I'm going to open up a new Blender. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it opened up the project I had before. So I'm going to open up recent to 01 render farm test. Okay, now I've got the same project open twice. Um, but the reason I'm going to do that, so uh, here as I start the animation, we're going to go ahead and put up to 100% 1920 by 1080. So let's see how long, oh, and I've got uh, for the sampling, I've got 250 render samples, which isn't a whole lot, but for this scene, it's enough. I mean, this is 100 right here in the, the preview port, and it looks great. So all right, I'm going to, this is, say this is the first one, I'm going to hit uh, first computer, hit animation. Okay, boom, it's rendering. Great. Now, let me open up the directory that's rendering to um, right here. So Blender Projects, Render Farm Test, I've created the directory called Render. And here's this file. Now, if we click on it right down here, it says it's zero bytes. It's an empty file. There's nothing in it right now. Why is it there? Well, it's there because it is telling any other computer that comes and looks at this directory that, that this frame is already being rendered. And if I were to cancel this render here, it actually, if we go back to this directory, it will go back and it will delete that file. So then another computer would come in and look and say, oh, wait a minute, that file isn't being rendered now for whatever reason, and we'll go ahead and go back. So this is only useful for animations because it's basically each computer is just doing its own frame. It, they can't all work together on one frame unless you had, yeah, it just, there are ways that you could probably make that work, but for this example, we're just talking about animations. So this frame is being animated. It creates this uh, temporary file, zero bytes. You'll see that when this is done rendering, this file is going to be replaced by the actual rendered frame. Makes sense. So I'm just going to kind of wait here for a second. Um, says, uh, so this has got about a minute 45 remaining for this frame. Maybe I should have should have done the 50% uh, frame size. Would have worked fine for this example. But we'll just kind of wait here. Oh, just while we're doing that, I guess I could show you show you. This is one of my best projects, one I'm most proud of. It's Yoda. Uh, made him. This is actually rendered in cycles. I've updated him a lot over the years. Um, pretty proud of that. Uh, a couple other. I did this Velociraptor. This is one of my first modeling projects where it really came out looking like what I really wanted it to look like. I had done animation with other people's models for a while. Um, when I made my own little Star Wars movie, uh, I did a lot of that. And um, But uh, that was like the first model that I did that really kind of I did from scratch and it turned out looking really well. And then yeah, Yoda um, made him from scratch and definitely, definitely spent a lot, a lot of hours on him. Uh, making them look just right, and I, I, I keep having hopes that eventually I'm going to get a chance to go back and, and make something just really spectacular with them. So, okay, look, frame's done, and sure enough, this is now a 1920 by 1080 JPEG, 200 kilobytes. Uh, the frame is rendered. We can look at it in preview, and look, oh, yes, wonderful. Uh, and lo and behold, it created a second blank file as it goes and starts rendering that. Well, let's say we're on a different computer. Uh, let's see, this one here. All right, so pretend like this is a different computer, even though it's not, it still works the same way. 
you've gone, you've pointed your computer to the network drive, you've maybe opened, you can just find it in, whether you're on a Mac, you can find it in Finder, or if you're on a PC, you can open it, find it in Explorer, find that file, open it up, it opens up in Blender, and it looks the exact same. We've made sure we have placeholders and uh, checked, overwrite, unchecked, and then everything else is good to go. So what do we do? We hit animation. Now I'm actually gonna open up the console here, uh, toggle system console, and you will see that in the console it tells us that it is, it, it is skipping existing frame uh, such and such and such, render farm test 0001.jpg. It's also skipping 0002.jpg, and if you look up here in the corner, it says it is rendering frame three. Now again, this is on the same computer, but it works just the exact same uh, if you're doing it on, on two different computers where it has looked into the directory, seen that uh, some version of Blender, some Blender somewhere, has created that file already, so it's gonna skip it and go to the next file. So here, this is finishing up. It's got about 38 seconds remaining um, as it's doing this animation, and if we open up our render again, you'll see that Render farm test three, uh, the frame is already done, which seems kind of weird to me. For some reason, this one's going a lot faster than the other one. I don't know why that, that's probably because I had it open, so it had focus, so it was going a little bit faster. Um, oh, you know why? <laughs> here, here is the big thing. This actually brings me to a good point, something to remember always check and make sure that you save that file as a final file that you are ready for all the computers to render. If you make any changes, make sure and save it to that file before you go to the other computers to start rendering them. What happened here? I changed this from 50% to 100%, but I forgot to save the file uh, in the other instance of Blender, which we will say is on a different computer. Um, and then I already had started rendering. Well, I forgot to change that, and or forgot to save it after I changed it. So this one, when I opened it up on, on this computer, it's only 50%. I have made mistakes like that before, where I've made changes, quickly started to render, said, okay, it looks good, forgot to save those changes, gone to a different computer, started to render, and then you start playing some of the frames back, and they look a little different because whatever part of the animation that you forgot to change is now uh, different between the two computers that are rendering frames. So I'll go ahead and cancel this. Now, one thing that is difficult, uh, and I have had kind of had to deal with issues with, um, is the fact that when a frame renders incorrectly, and uh, you know, for whatever reason you made a mistake, or whatever, sometimes it is a very tedious task to go back and find all the frames that that computer did that are messed up compared to the other ones, and you have to go back and manually delete them. Um, but here it's easy, we got two frames, they're both 960 by 540, but these are 1920 by 1080, and you know what, I'm just gonna actually delete the 1920 by 1080 ones. Uh, we are gonna just do the 50% instead, so let's open up open up my other copy of Blender, stop it, we're gonna do 50% and hit animation. Now look, it went back to frame one because again, uh, because I deleted frame one out of Explorer here, uh, it went back and looked and it said, hey, frame one doesn't exist, so let's render that one. And let's go back to my other copy of Blender and again, hit animation. And sure enough, it starts with frame two. And render, okay, look, it's got a frame two. Go back to the other one. I know switching between all these might be a little convoluted, but you can see here, frame one is finishing on this uh, computer, you know, copy of Blender. And sure enough, it finished and render. And sure enough, there's the finished frame. So. That might have been a little bit more convoluted than it needed to be, but you, I'm sure you got the idea of exactly how this works. So now I can have, uh, I just did an animation uh, last week or two weeks ago, uh, where it was taking five minutes per frame for 509 frames. So that's like a 48 hour render. I wanted to speed that up, so I had three different computers working on it. And uh, granted, this is my fastest computer here. It was doing a frame every five minutes. I had a different computer uh, that was doing a frame about every seven minutes. And then I had another one that was doing a frame every 25 minutes. It's a really slow, older computer, but hey, that's another frame that this computer doesn't have to do. So 
Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them down in the comments. I'll try to get back to you on them and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys how that works. And hopefully uh, it will speed up some of your renders as you are able to utilize some extra computers that you have lying around the house. Uh, that's it for me. I'm Matt Hoker, uh, Blazer003, and uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like. And that's about it. Happy blending. <laughs>